Lazio are one of the Lazio are one of the biggest clubs in Italian football. Yet in their history, they've only owned Serie A twice: once in the seventy three seventy four season, and once in the 99-2000 season under the management of Sven Joran Eriksson where they also added the Coppa Italia to win a double. Last season Lazio finished second in the league but this season but this season they're stuck in mid-table down in seventh place as we record this which is before a lot of teams have played on the weekend they're already 13 points behind Juventus 12 points behind Inter Milan last season they only lost eight league games in the whole season. This season, they've already lost six. Including this season, they've only made it to the main stage of the Champions League three times since the mid noughties The aim of this rebuild is to get Lazio regularly challenging for the title over five seasons and see how much of a run we can make in European football. So we're starting this rebuild in real world mode. So obviously there's going to be a lot of transfers still to happen. The board expectation for the league is just to finish in the top half, which considering they finished second in real life last season is a bit of a strange one. As I said, in terms of transfers, there's a lot still coming in. Um, a, three of them are actually loan deals that are our permanent deals, one after one season, I think two after two seasons. And they are players that I think are going to be a big part of the future of this save in Pellegrini, the left back, uh, Nicola, Nicolo Rivella, and Matteo Guendouzi. I think those three players are probably going to play a big, big part in this side as we go through the rebuild. And obviously, there's an awful lot of players going out, most of them on loan, um, but there is a big, big change in this squad before we even get the first season underway. So season number one has um, got underway and things are going reasonably well so far. Transfer wise, we didn't do an awful lot that wasn't already on the books to happen. I think in fact, the only incoming transfer we made was to sign Mihailo Petkovic, who we'd signed on a, on a previous rebuild on the uh, Ajax rebuild. We signed him a few more seasons on, so obviously not quite as developed at this stage. And in terms of the outgoings, I don't think we did an awful lot else other than maybe a few more players going out on loan. Tactic-wise, we're going with a 4-3-3. To start with, I think it fits the players that we've got at the club. What we have had to do, though, just purely because of, based on what's happened in the the early fixtures is we've, we've decided to, to nail Guendouzi and Ravella into the team because they don't seem to have really been picked or don't seem to have been anywhere near the first choice team um, in the opening games of the season. Um, I think it provides us with enough stability but also enough forward um, players to maybe cause a difference. We've got a couple of decent wide players and then We've got a pretty strong three that can play in midfield. And so far to start the season, we've played two league games. We started with a home game against Verona um, and came away with a pretty comfortable 3-1 victory. Uh, goes from Sakagni Immobile, who's going to be key, at least in these first few, se first few seasons of the save, and then Casali um, to give us the 3-1 three, three victory. We then went away to Atalanta and... Got a 1-1 draw, a fairly even game, and we had to come from behind to get that. But a decent a decent point away from home, I think. Um, and I think everything kind of aligns with, with what the board are looking for. So let's go ahead and simulate season one. So season one was so, so close to being the perfect first season. We take the cup competitions first of all. We won the Super Cup. Um, in the final, we beat Fiorentina 5-2 after extra time. We won the Coppa Italia. Again, beating Fiorentina in the final, beating them 4-0. Got off to a great start with Zakagni scoring a hat-trick in the first 24 minutes. And Immobile adding a goal late on 
in the second half. Champions League, I mean, with Arsenal and Bayern in the group, probably expected not to to qualify into the in or to stay in the Champions League. Dropped down to the Europa League, and then we made it to the quarter final where we got beat three two on aggregate by Ajax. And then the league. I mean, if you look at those league positions, we were first all the way up until the last day of the season. And what's, what makes it even worse is that Roma became champions. I mean, if you look at that league table, we lost three of our last five games. I mean, we did hammer Roma 4-0, but we lost to Napoli, we lost to Torino, and we also lost to Bologna. And that's cost us the title. I mean, we've lost, we've taken six points out of 15 to end the season. We've ended up losing out on the title by one point. And then we've ended up getting beat by Napoli for second position because of the game that we lost in the penultimate weekend of the season. Just a real kick in the teeth. Uh, and Mobley was top goal scorer in the league. Zakagni was right up there in terms of the man of the matches. I mean, we, we did concede 48 goals, but we scored 88 plus 40 goal difference for the best in the league. And we've basically bottled it in the last few weeks of the season. And as I said, the only thing worse than bottling the title like that, as Lazio, is for Roma to go and win the title. Looking at the player performances, Immobile obviously outstanding, 35 goals, 9 assists. The same for Zakagni, 17 goals, 14 assists. And Felipe Anderson with 11 goals and 16 assists. Um, the, the one problem you would say is that it is a pretty aging squad. We did do some work in January to try and fix that. In January, we, we brought in Rooney Bargy from Copenhagen. Um, just to try and bring a bit of extra quality in and also a younger player as well, bring the average age of the squad down. We have got some deals already done for the summer as well. Um, so we're, we're bringing in John paul Van Hecker from Brighton. We're bringing in Daniele Rogani from Juventus. Um, and then obviously the Pellegrini, Rivella, and Gwenduzi deals were ones that are already done. Gwenduzi turns permanent this summer. Pellegrini and Ravella turn permanent the following summer. And the board have given us 19 million to spend. And there's plenty of wage, room in the wage budget, 151,000. So hopefully we can do something in this in the summer to strengthen the squad and go better than we have done this season and hopefully not collapse at the end like we did. So transfer-wise, not major work during the summer. In terms of the outgoings, Pedro left at the end of his contract on a free to Ren. Mark Mario Gila left to go to Lons, and then there was a few loan players went out. We've already mentioned that we signed Van Hecker and Rugani on at the end of their contracts. The Guendouzi deal obviously was made permanent this summer, and then we signed Francesco Pio Esposito just to provide some more depth. And just to try and future-proof the squad, because I think there's a pretty good chance that Immobile retires before the end of this rebuild. Tactics-wise, we're not doing anything different from last season. We're just not locking any players into the into any of the positions. We're sticking with a 4-3-3. It worked by and large for most of last season. And this season, I think you can see we started the season well. A pretty comfortable 3-1 victory at Torino, despite them taking an early lead. Home to Inter, we were 4-0 up before they pulled one back. Genoa was a tougher game. It was 1-1 at half-time with Tati Castellanos with a, a second-half hat-trick to secure a 4-1 victory. And then the big one, trying to assert our dominance in the city of Rome. And we came away with a really... We hammered them 5-0, um, laying a marker down for the season ahead. So let's simulate season two and see if we can do what we should have done last season and see if we can pick up the league title. And there we have it. We have managed to do better than last season. We've been top for most of the season. We ended up winning the title. 93 points. Five points clear of Inter. 
Uh, Roma, who obviously pipped us to the title last season, dropped down to 11th um, this season. Uh, Kiro Mobley, top goal scorer, top of the average ratings. Zakagni, joint top in terms of assists. And we ended up with a, a goal difference of plus 65. Champions League. Champions League, we made it out of the league phase. We qualified in fourth. Uh, we won six of the league phase games, including games against Newcastle and PSG. We drew 2-2 in the Bernabeu against Real Madrid. And then we lost 5-0 at home to Napoli. That one's a bit of a a problem. Um, that meant, obviously, we skipped the playoff round and went into the round of 16, where we just snuck past Porto 3-2 on aggregate. And then we got knocked out 3-2 on aggregate by Man City. They won the first leg 3-0, we won the second leg 2-0, and it just wasn't enough for us to stay in the competition. Coppa Italia, we made it to the quarter-final stage of that competition as well, getting beat after extra time 1-0 by Milan. And we won the Super Cup again. In terms of the, the squads, Kiro Mobley, 42 goals in 43 games in all competitions. Zakagni, 18 goals and 17 assists. Castellanos, Picked up 13 goals. Gwenduzi with 10 goals and 11 assists. Um, we've shared everything around pretty much, apart from the goals. The goals are mobile, just out, absolutely outstanding this season. But unfortunately, he's 35. So how much longer can he keep on scoring those goals? And then the budgets for, for season three, we've got, 44.5 million in the transfer budget, 214,000 in the wage budget. So plenty of, of room to do some work in, this summer. So season three, again, not much happened in terms of the transfer window. Uh, Anderson and Fernandez left at the end of their contracts. Suleimani went to Feyenoord. And we sent some players out on loan, including Patrick, who dropped down the, the pecking order at centre-half. Um, obviously, the deals for Ravella and Pellegrini um, became permanent ones. And there weren't very many glaring holes in the squad. So we spent £25 million to sign Manu Kone just to strengthen the midfield, can play in the midfield or in the defensive midfield role. Um, just a real quality player um, as, we, that we're looking, as we're looking to develop the squad through this rebuild. Tactics wise, I mean, if it's not broken, don't, there's no need to fix it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I mean, we've, we should have won the title in season one. We've won the title in season two. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't really need much explanation. We're not changing anything there. And then, as far as the season's concerned, a pretty decent start to the season. We started with a 1-0 victory away at Sassuolo. We left it pretty late before Castellano scored. What we were trying out the start of the season was a 4 2 4 to see if that would work. Um, to see if we're giving Castellanos and Immobile time would would work. Um, we came away with a 1 0 victory on that opening day of the season. We then hammered Torino 5 2 at home, um, but we're a bit too open, I think. And then we're at home to Roma. When Doozy got sent off early on, and we did take a lead. They then went 2-1 in front and we left it very late to get the equaliser from Castellanos. So a pretty decent start to the season, but the 4-2-4 just doesn't seem to have worked. I mean, if you look at even the, the pre-season games, the friendlies against Everton, where we lost 7-3, and the, the friendly we lost against Arsenal, where we lost 5-4, it's just leaving us far too, far too open. That's why we've gone back to that 4-3-3. So let's simulate season three and see if that was the right decision or not. So season three was a bit of a disappointment. Um, we've ended up fourth. We've qualified for the Champions League, but it's a big drop off. I mean, Inter had an outstanding season, finishing on 95 points, but we were 16 points behind and we've drawn far too many games. And you can see from the league positions that we were we spent half the season in fourth without moving, basically. Um, so, pretty disappointing. And Wobbly again, top goal scorer. Luis Alberto, top assists. And Champions League, 
we <laughs> our form in the Champions League was pretty similar to the to the league. So the league we we drew ten games of out of thirty eight. So in the Champions League our form was pretty much the same as in the league. So in the league we drew ten games out of thirty eight. In the Champions League league phase we drew six out of eight. We drew with Rapid, we drew with Sporting, we drew with Man United, Dortmund, Getafe and Bayern. And we managed to beat Leipzig and Fenerbahce to finish on 12 points. It meant we went into the knockout playoff round. Where we managed to beat Hitafe and this time and, and we came away 8-1 victors on aggregate. And we went into the round of 16 where we knocked out PSG 4-2 on aggregate. But then we went into the quarterfinal and Leipzig got their revenge and knocked us out 3-2 on aggregate. And then the Copper Italia for the second year in a row, knocked out in the quarterfinal stage by Milan, this time 2-0. And certainly the most disappointing season of the lot so far. Um, looking, at this, looking at the players, and unfortunately, Giro Immobile is retiring this summer. He still managed to get 33 goals in 44 games, so he's certainly going out at the top. Castellanos managed to pick up 16. Rooney Bargi really coming into his own this season. 14 goals, 16 assists. Luis Alberto, 14 goals, 19 assists. And Zakagni, 14 goals and 14 assists. Um, we just have drawn far, far too many games this season, and that's the one thing we do really need to improve on going into season four. For season four, the board have found some money for us. Um, 58 million spent trans in the transfer budget, 110,000 in the wage budget. Um, so hopefully we can uh, just manage to add some players to add a bit of quality to the squad to get us challenging for the title again. So season four saw a lot more transfer action than had happened previously. The really big departure was the departure of Felipe Anderson. At the end of his contract, he's decided to move on to Inter. Um, some more players left at the end of the contract. And then we got rid of some fringe players to get some cash in and build up the, the coffers. And then the incomings. We spent big on Jeremy Doku, 38 and a half million. We signed Caleb Wiley because we needed some depth at left back. We signed Alexander Aravena just again. I mean, we've still, we're still in a very similar position to where we were after the first season. Um, obviously now Immobile is retired, so Castellanos is the main man up front. We've got Rooney Bargi can play there, Doku can play there. But really we're going to be looking at Aravena and, Pio, and Francesco Pio Esposito to step up big as well. We needed a backup goalkeeper, so we've signed Samuel Suarez from Benfica. And we've added Fabio Moretti just to add a bit more quality, a bit more depth in the centre of midfield as well. Tactic-wise, going into the season, we're not changing anything. We're going to st stick with the 4-3-3. It suits the players we've got in the squad best, I think. And as far as the season, it looked like it was starting pretty well. Um, we beat Monza 3-0 on the opening day of the season at home. We then went away to Cagliari and we won 3-0 as well. And then unfortunately we were at home to Torino and lost 3-2. Um, just not a good enough performance. But let's simulate season four and see if we can get back into the title contention. So we did manage to finish a position higher in the league. We managed to finish in third. Um, we were three points behind Milan in second. But... Inter lost one game all season, ended up with 101 points. It's going to be tough to compete with that. And I mean, we basically spent the whole second half of the season in third position. We did end up with a, a goal difference of plus 71, um, but so did Inter. And they also got an extra 13 points than us. Um, Castellanos really kind of stepped up second in terms of goals in the, in the league this season. Luis Alberto still top of the assists. Gwen Doozy right up there in terms of the average rating as well. And Rooney Bargi right up there with seven man of the match awards. Um, but in the other competitions, really a season to forget. Champions League, we really struggled to make it through. Um, finished in 19th with just 11 points. 
I made it into the knockout playoff round, but then we were knocked out and hammered, basically. We lost 6-0 in aggregate to Man United. The Copper Italia, we went out on penalties in the third round to Roma. Doesn't get much worse than that. And then in the Super Cup, we won the third place playoff, which isn't really an awful lot of anything. Um, in terms of sort of performances, Rooney Bargy, top goal scorer with 23 goals in all competitions, 12 assists as well. Castro Janos, 22 goals and 4 assists. Luis Alberto, 17 and 18. And Zakagni, 14 and 13. The players have obviously certainly stepped up to fill the, the departed place of Kiro Mobley in terms of goal scoring. But we just need to be better. Um, we are challenging for the title, which obviously, well, we're, we're in. In the conversation, I mean, in have won the last two league titles pretty, pretty handily. Um, but there's one season of the rebuild left. We've got 55 million to spend in the transfer budget and 125,000 in the wage budget. So let's see if we can we can get back on track in season five. So season five didn't see much in terms of the outgoings, basically players leaving at the end of the contracts. We did do two deals incomings, and we did them pretty early on as well. Firstly, we picked up Marcus Leonardo from Aston Villa. Not had the best of times while he was at Aston Villa, so hopefully he can revitalise his career with us. And we signed Alessandro Zanoli because we needed a right back with... He said, leaving at the end of his contract, so we needed someone just to compete with and, and back up for Manuel Lazari. So tactics-wise, we're sticking with the 4-3-3. And the season started a bit hit and miss. I mean, opening day of the season, home to Salonatana, we hammered them 6-0. And you think everything looks good. And then the following week, well, in fact, that weekend... We go away to Inter Milan and capitulate in the second half and get hammered 4-0. But then we bounce back with a 2-0 victory at home over Juventus and then a 4-1 victory away at Fiorentina. So I don't really know what to make of that start to the season. Um, obviously Inter have been the dominant team for the last two seasons. We got hammered by them, but then we've also looked pretty comfortable in every other game we've played. So let's simulate the fifth and final season of this rebuild and see if we can get ourselves back into really challenging for the title. And the answer is, with a pretty decent end to the season, we have managed to get ourselves right back up into that picture. We've ended up finishing second behind Milan in the league. And we had the two top goal scorers in the league in Castellanos and Doku. Uh, Luis Alberto again, still right up there, despite getting on age, still right up there with the assists. Champions League, again, we struggled in the league phase. We only managed, managed to finish 15th in the league phase. So we, we went into the knockout playoff round where we overcame Dinamo 4 2 on aggregate. And then in the round of 16, we basically got trounced by PSG. We ended up going out 8 2 on aggregate. European competition is the one real failing of this save so far. We've, I don't think we've made it past the quarterfinal of any of the competitions, um, be it the Europa League in the first season after we went out of the Champions League or in the Champions League since then. Uh, Copper Italia, we managed to go back and win the trophy again for the second time in the save. 1-0 victory over Milan. A last-minute Jeremy Doku penalty sealing the, the trophy for us. Squad-wise, in this final season, Castellanos with 26 goals. Doku with 20 goals and 14 assists. Zakagni 17 goals and 16 assists. Luis Alberto, 12 goals and 16 assists. And Rooney Baggi, not quite as good a season as he had last season, but 11 goals and 12 assists as well. On reflection, I would say that was a pretty decent five seasons at Lazio for a club that have only won Serie A three times. We've managed to win it. We should have won it twice if we hadn't capitulated at the end of season one. We've con constantly had them qualify for the Champions League, which is something they've struggled to do in recent seasons in real life. 
and we've managed to pick up a couple of copper salaries as well along the way. So looking at it, obviously season one we finished third, but we were top going into the last round of games and we managed to pick up the Super Cup and the Copper Italia. Season two, we managed to win the league and the Super Cup. Season three was definitely the most disappointing in terms of finishing fourth there. Um, and we managed to pick up the Super Cup again. So we won the Super Cup three years in a row at that point. Um, season four, finished third. And just a really disappointing season in all of the cup competitions. And then season five, obviously we've won the Copa Italia, we've finished second. And we've obviously done a decent job because we've made it onto the, the favoured personnel list as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.